Welcome back to Against the Grain. My name is Dr. Samir Kakodkar. I'm a gastroenterologist and specialist in ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. Fasting is becoming more and more popular nowadays and is being promoted for everything from obesity, diabetes, cancer, and now diseases of immune dysregulation. There are many forms, including prolonged water fasts, fasting mimicking diets, intermittent fasting, and time-restricted eating. There is no strong research I know of supporting the use of fasting as a treatment for inflammatory bowel disease and can, in fact, be dangerous in someone who is malnourished and underweight. By chance, I discovered a thread on a forum where a man named Veach Schmauler from the Czech Republic claimed to have cured his Crohn's disease by fasting for 38 days. Yes, you heard that right, 38 days. I contacted him, and he kindly shared his experience, which is truly remarkable and a compelling story. As a disclaimer, this is not an endorsement or recommendation to try fasting for inflammatory bowel disease, as I think this can be very dangerous depending on your personal circumstances and health. This also has not been rigorously tested in a clinical trial to confirm safety and efficacy, so at this point, this is simply an anecdotal success story. I would not recommend anyone try this, but hopefully this can be open the scientific community's eyes so that appropriate research can be done. You can also contact me in case you have any questions about this podcast or if you'd like to make an appointment to see me. My email is samir, the number three, at gmail.com. So today we have Veet Smauler, someone who I've been very excited to speak with because um, I had actually stumbled upon something in a message board that, that you had posted about you believe that you've cured your Crohn's disease through fasting. And I just want, and you've, you actually posted your protocol online of what you actually did, and it just piqued my interest, and I was very interested to see what your experience was with this. So to start off with, um, can you give us some background just about yourself, where you're from, and, and kind of what you do? Uh, yes, thank you, Samir, for for this very nice uh, opportunity to reveal this this wonderful uh, experience from my side. So uh, I was born in 1978 uh, in Prague, in Czech Republic or Czechoslovakia at the time, and I would say I had normal normal uh, childhood uh, with my parents, and everything seemed to be okay. And for my relative, I have aunt, and uh, she was suffering from Crohn's disease. And uh, when I was a kid, I was thinking, oh, I never want to go into this stage of this disease because it, it's terrible. Uh, you have uh, a lot of uh, limits uh, and so on. And you don't feel very well. And, and I actually saw all of those up and downs of her, and uh, I felt a little bit sorry for her. And then the life went normally on, and uh, in actually about 2004, uh, I noticed that I have some blood in my stool and uh, I just say, okay, that may happen. So I kept it for a couple of weeks and uh, it, it was actually more and more intensive. So so I said, okay, I have to see a doctor and uh, they diagnosed me with uh, Crohn disease. So uh, I said, oh, so I know how is it. I know my aunt very well and of course other friends who suffer from the same disease. So uh, First, uh, it was, I would say, normal. you have kind of a shock of, of this, uh, of this uh, finding. But after about half a year, I said, okay, maybe uh, it's not uh, such a desperate situation. Maybe there is some solution to this disease, and maybe it has some other meaning than just to suffer for the rest of your life, although today you can live up to 80, 90s maybe. Uh, but, uh, of course, your, your life is a little bit uh, in, in, uh, impaired in, in quality. Uh, so... Roughly about 2005, I started to, to looking for, for different uh, cures or, or different methods, actually, what to do with this disease. And uh, so I started to, to changing my diet, you know, introducing uh, different foods, uh, leaving out meat, the meat and uh, other stuff, components. And all of, all of the, those methods, actually, they moved the disease into some stage, some, some little bit improved, almost a little bit worse. And I have to say, actually, that... Uh, uh, the Crohn disease uh, attacked uh, my rectum and uh, terminal realm. And this was kind of, I would say, good opportunity because you can actually see, I would say, the extent of the disease. You don't need any, I would say, good diagnostic tools. Uh, you can just see what is happening with your rectum, how you feel uh, after all, and actually what is roughly the state of this disease. And uh, 
it, it was for a couple of years like that. I was under medication. Uh, I, I was uh, taking Pentaza. I don't know if you have this, such kind of a drug yes. in the US. Uh, yeah. So I was on this, and I would say it, it was not very serious, but but uh, it, you you saw the symptoms very clearly, and. Uh, so it, it went like that for for actually a couple of years, experimenting with food and and uh, uh, also tried uh, different medications and different therapies, etc. But still, the disease was here. What and, what uh, other medications did you try besides Pentassa? Just out of curiosity, uh, we tried also some ibuprofen, uh, which which I think is not really intended for such kind of disease. Yeah. And uh, prednisol was also uh, tested uh, in in, okay. in uh, one stage. Uh, okay. So uh, so that was roughly it. So I actually saw some small response of the disease uh, to to those experiments. But still, I was thinking, okay, something is missing. This is not probably the solution. So I was looking for some, I would say, more drastic methods how to cure this disease. Uh, and of course, first, what comes into your mind is cancer. Cancer is uh, can be a very fast disease, and you need some fast solution. So I said, maybe you know, there is some hint uh, for cancer, and uh, that's actually how I came across the, the boy's diet uh, and uh, his protocol actually for curing uh, cancer disease. And actually, I don't know why, but but Bryce was he was uh, an electrician. He was not a doctor, and he lived actually on the border between Austria and Czechoslovakia. So he was, I would say, very actually close also to Prague. So so you actually understood his his philosophy and his arguing. And mm-hmm. actually, the booklet the booklet you read has about twelve pages only. It's a very short booklet about healing by by fasting. Uh, he claimed that he, he cured over 20,000 patients with, with uh, cancer in, under different conditions. So I said, okay, that, that sounds really good. And, uh, you know, it actually gave me some kind of inspiration to go into this, this fasting, fasting direction. Hmm. Okay. So, uh, so, so that was roughly what, what is actually the background. I just came came to to this booklet, and you said normally books has like hundreds of pages, and it just takes a lot of time to understand what they talk about and and they argue. But this guy said, okay, don't worry about anything. You just go to fast, and you just spend 42 days by fasting, and if you believe in it, you are basically clean. After 42 days, you will be you will be healed and and uh, healthy again. Okay, so I'm I'm sure many of the listeners are hearing you talk about a fast lasting 42 days, and especially in the U.S., where the concept of fasting is very foreign to most people. But thinking about fasting being without food for that a period of time is very foreign and probably scary for a lot of people. Um, so, what do you say to the people who say who believe that's not possible to actually fast for that long? Uh, you, you are absolutely right. Uh, actually, when I said this to my friends and relatives that I plan to do such kind of fasting, uh, basically everybody condemned that. Said you are crazy. You will die within a couple of days. You cannot survive it. I don't know anyone who did it. You know, we had a convert world. We know people who actually were without food and how they finished and and so on. And I think this is really not the method for everyone. I, I, I expect this is just for 1%, 2% of population, maybe. But surely you have to decide for this method. Nobody can convince you you have to do this, you have to fast, because this is much more difficult. And I'm sure we will talk a little bit about this later. Mm-hmm. So, so, so it has to be your decision. You have to be determined to go into this method. And I think actually it doesn't come from you. I think this is a little bit driven by God or by some, say, say power or whatever from universe telling you, okay, you will go into this method because it should it should save you a little bit more than just curing the disease. Uh, I, I will talk a little bit about that later. So you are right that for the majority of people, this is something unimaginable uh, to be 42 days without food. And actually, even for me, this was like in manageable saying, okay, but how I'm going to do it? I don't know anyone who ever did such long fasting uh, before. And uh, I was just saying, okay, this is more than one month without food, which is something that you have no daily experience with that. So you're absolutely right. The, the idea is a little bit crazy. It seems to be very, very complicated in the beginning. But that's that's the initial condition. How is it? Sure. Okay, so... Looks like you had you decided to go forward with this. 
Um, and I just had a question, you know, before you started doing, decided to do the fast, it seemed like you were having symptoms, but probably not like severe symptoms. So were, were you significantly underweight prior to fast, to starting the fast, uh, or were you relatively normal weight? Well, I was uh, slightly underweight, uh, but not much. Uh, I have 178 centimeters and 64, 65 kilos. So I'm a little bit uh, below the average, okay. but not much. So so there was no strong uh, malnutrition or anything. And also, uh, of course, if, if, if you don't have enough weight, uh, this is actually against the classical fasting protocols uh, because this can be actually very dangerous. Uh, okay. So so as I'm saying, this is not for everybody. But there are some contraindications, uh, uh, and, and of course you have to take into account your your health, healthy conditions that you have. Yeah, and I can speak probably on behalf of physicians in the U.S. is that probably most would be very wary about starting such a protocol in in the in patients with inflammatory bowel disease because a large percentage of them are tend to be underweight especially when they're not doing well especially when they're symptomatic have active inflammation so for those people um, obviously this would be a, a d very dangerous thing to already be underweight probably already be malnourished and then to undergo such a protocol would likely not be a good idea exactly and uh... Of course, I'm talking about fasting in one period for, for a very long time, mm -hmm. but you have different schools in world. Uh, for example, a Russian school, they, they were famous for, for that. Uh, they had like a cascade fasting. So you said, okay, if, if you don't have enough weight, it's just one day without food, one day with food, then you prolong to two days, and you go like into some kind of a cascade just to get used to such kind of uh, of uh, regime uh, and of course but you have to be under under the doctor uh, doctor control because uh, a lot of things that she can can go wrong right okay so what happened then so tell us about your experience with the fast and uh, what so happened in the beginning and what happened over time so this was in the beginning and i was normally actually going to work uh, i i work as associate professor at university so I, I don't work physically too much i'm rather looking in computer and programming and uh, you know doing kind of scientific work so uh, actually the first day you, you just get up in the morning and say okay so now let, let's let the goal is roughly 42 days so so you started fasting and uh, uh, of course, the boys protocol. This is not just fasting, taking just the water. You have you have also some some herb teas, uh, like a sage tea, for example. Then you have a little bit of vegetable juices. Uh, so I would know this is not uh, the fasting, just like taking water and nothing else. Uh, although this is possible, way, I experience it as well. But now let's let's just go with the first fasting. Mm -hmm. So so I actually know that there is a little, little bit of support of some say taste and and a little bit of teas. And of course, the goal is not to take uh, too many nutri nutrients in, in your body, so as slow as possible, actually. But of course, you need, you need water. Basically, you can drink as much as you want. That there is no limit, like uh, that, that, that you that you have to uh, drink less or more. You you just you just adjust it uh, to, to your actual body needs. And of course, what is happening during first roughly three days, uh, your body actually. Uh, knows that it, it will receive no food, so it tries. It, it, it's changing its mind and its attitude toward food. So, still you may see some food say, "Oh, maybe I could eat it," but you know that you should not. So you are a little bit tempted by food, but th th this takes people a report normally between one or three days, uh, kind of the temptation. Mm -hmm. And what I was actually surprised after this short first period, that actually. It, it, it was lost. This taste for food was completely lost. Actually, food started to be like a piece of concrete. Actually, you know, it's there, but you are not tempted to eat it or do anything else. So the body actually started like to change into into different regime. Okay. Uh, so so this is what is normally reported in, in, in several literature in, in, the, in the U.S. That there are people like Bragg and Armstrong, you probably know them. Uh, they were, I would say, kind of uh, masters in, in fasting, doing you know different protocols. Mm. But th but this is, I would say, common pattern that actually we we are used to fasting for, from nature. I, during the history, actually, fasting was was uh, I would say normal, sure. a normal part of everyday everyday life. So over millions of years, actually, we somehow get used to it. And you know, 
couple of days without food, it's not in principle any, any big problem uh, generally. Right. Uh, so, so that's how it actually started. And of course, because you were a little bit occupied by work, so so you didn't pay too much attention actually what is happening with your body. And I was waiting my body from time to time just to see how the weight actually drops down day by day. And in the beginning, you lose like one kilo a day. But this is basically the loose of of of, uh, of water. This is not the loose of muscles or anything else. So, basically, the the drop in weight is is, is quite fast in the beginning, mm-hmm. and 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 actually it goes up to people say 10, 12 days, something like that, maybe maybe two weeks, uh, where you have uh, they call it a first crisis in fasting. So so it's usually looking like you get up in the morning and you feel really miserable, like very weak, and you say, oh, I cannot probably get up and uh, so it's complicated and I don't want to go to work. So you, you speak a little bit depressed. You feel depressed at that time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but again, from experience, what I read all those books say, okay, but you just overcome it. Uh, you know, it can be just a question of several hours or it can be it can be longer. And it will overcome and then it will just continue further normally. Uh, okay. I would like to emphasize that I was just, uh, say, more or less blindly following this, this brace protocol. So... Uh, sometimes you may also clean your clean your intestines uh, by some uh, enemas or, or uh, such kind of things actually to get rid of what, whatever is remaining there. But I was not doing anything about it. I just kept everything uh, going in the normal way. Okay. So so it was just going, and uh, after roughly three weeks, you have uh, they call it second acidotic crisis, and again you feel a little bit a little bit depressed, a little bit miserable. Mm-hmm. And uh, after three weeks, it's it's again within a couple of usual hours, it, it, it's over, and then actually starts like I would say like a very happy period of time because uh, suddenly you have so much energy, you don't know what to do with that energy. That's that's a little bit paradox because normally if you go to work, when 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 work time is over, you say okay, I'm tired and you know I, I need to, to take some rest. Yeah. But after the after those three weeks, suddenly you had so much energy that you don't know actually what to do with that energy. Hmm. So, so, so the life looked like uh, you went to bed around midnight and, and you woke up around 4 or 5 a.m. Hmm. So you slept four or five hours, I would say quite relaxed. And then like say, okay, why should I take bus to work? I can just walk. So you walk six kilometers, no problem uh, to work. Uh, then you work, uh, you, you actually had no lunch time, of course. You were just working slowly and you, you feel absolutely happy no problem actually nobody bothered you everything was very calm very peaceful i would say in very nice mood it, it, it was actually going like that till the, the evening and in the evening say maybe i should go home and and then you just stopped work there and you were very happy and, and actually walk home so this actually happened after roughly those three weeks of, of, of fasting and and actually i said well fasting is actually very easy people say okay you know we are we are uh, convinced that it has to be hard and we will starve and, and do some 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 certain things and suddenly you have very bright mind you have a lot of a lot of interest in everyday life what is happening around you have a lot of inspiration you know I, I was writing some papers so so I get some very nice ideas how to do it so I was actually very surprised it actually body responded in this way I I, I was waiting something like laying in the bed and and not be very very strong etc. So, uh, yeah. yeah, I've I've heard the actual record for fasting, at least water fasting, and this was more in somebody who was very obese. Uh, was like a full year of just drinking water and not eating anything. So I, I believe that's the longest recorded fast. I'm not sure what happened to that person long term, but yeah, I've I've also read similar things. I I have not. Um, obviously done a fast as long as you have, but I've heard that that initial hunger eventually goes away after a few days. And also this, this idea of having mental clarity and good energy after, after a while is also something I've heard from other people. Yeah. So, uh, I basically followed what is written in the book by, I would say, much more experienced people, by, by also physicians and, and uh, doctors who, who were in uh, charge of uh, having under control thousands of those of those people uh, going fasting. So, of course, it's, in, it's, it's individual. Everybody responds a little bit different ways, but, but uh, this seems to be quite common. And uh, actually, I understood that fasting is kind of part of life. It's not anything, I would say, strange, nothing that we would not be really adjusted to. 
And uh, of course, people were telling me you look more like a zombie because you, you were losing your kilos. And uh, after three weeks, I had like 58 kilos roughly. So uh, you actually see it in, in the face that this guy is a little bit skinny. Mm-hmm. But I felt absolutely wonderful because your body weight goes down. So you're like, you are almost flying, actually. You make a step. And your muscles, they don't overcome such a uh, weight that is normally there. So, so you actually walk normal way. You even can ride a bike, of course, a little bit slower. You can do some manual work and you can walk basically without, I would say, almost any limitations. Of course, you are a little bit cold. You feel cold all the time because even uh, this was actually in June, so it was summertime. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so although the temperature outside was, uh, was like 100 Fahrenheit, uh, you had you had uh, pull over on, on yourself, so you looked a bit crazy on, on on the street because you know people were sweating and then you were directly insulating the body. So uh, it was a little bit funny. Yeah? Mm-hmm. And sometimes people actually ask you what is happening because you you look re- re- really badly, you know, skinny. And I say I feel absolutely perfect. You know, I, I haven't been eating for for a couple of weeks, and they say, oh, that is impossible, and and, and so on. <laughs> so. Okay, so tell us, you know, what what happened to your symptoms? What what was the outcome of this uh, this prolonged fast? Okay, so uh, essentially, what I read in book is uh, that uh, that your body actually uh, responds much faster to different chemicals that you put into your body. So what is usually advised is that you have to you have to uh, leave all the medication away after roughly one week of fasting. Because then, actually, even if you take a one pill, the, the effect is much, much stronger to the body. And uh, this is, in fact, in normal life, it would be like an overdosing of, of some medicals. So, of course, I consulted with my doctor this, this strategy, and he said, okay, if you think, because this was pentaza and was not, I would say, very severe. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so leave it out after that week, and you will see how it will work, whether you will have some symptoms or not. And of course, because you don't eat anything, you just you just drink uh, those herb teas and a little bit of that vegetable juice. Uh, you basically your digestive tract is basically not working too much. It's just basically relaxing. So actually, you are not aware of any symptom at the time. I, actually, the bleeding stop uh, uh, from the rectum, and uh, I felt actually good. So I said, okay, I'm basically feeling like a healthy guy. So I, I felt no. Uh, no problem not taking any pills that that, that that I had to take before. So, one, so uh, one thing I would caution the audience regarding that as far as medications, obviously speak with your gastroenterologist or physician about continuing stopping any medications, and they obviously need to be aware of everything that you're doing. But as far as stopping medications in general, there are certain ones that that may be okay to do with and some not. And one that's particularly dangerous to stop immediately is prednisone, especially if you've been on it for more than three weeks. um, You can end up getting adrenal crisis and being very sick. So just make sure you're in contact with your physician and uh, at all times about any decisions specifically that you make with your medications. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I, I was, I was a lucky patient because my physician, physician told me, okay, I don't know too much about fasting, but I believe you that you read it in some books, and of course, if you will feel miserable within a couple of days or hours, just let me know, and and we will look on that. So he actually left the door open for this kind of say experiment under 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 the control, which I know a lot of people who didn't have this this luck, and the the, the doctor said, okay, you can do it, but on your own risk. Actually, I I, I don't want to have anything in common mm-hmm. with it. So so I understand, of course, this very because it's it's one step uh, one step little bit uh, beside uh, the, the I would say the common way of of doing things. Mm-hmm. Sure. Uh, so, so uh, you ask about how it continued. So uh, there actually came this, I would say, uh, 42 days, uh, which was planned according to Bryce. And uh, of course, you have also uh, indications where you sh- you should stop s- uh, fasting. And uh, one of the indication is that you actually. Uh, feel very strong hunger of your body, which is a signal. Okay, you have to stop now, or you know, all, all of those uh, all of those uh, methods you are using can have a permanent uh, permanent uh, 
impact on your health. So uh, I was like starting feeling that maybe it's coming to the end of the time and maybe it's necessary necessary to to finish uh, 42 days. So I actually stop it at at 38 days. And uh, the stop was like, I I got up in the morning, I said, okay, let's go slowly back uh, for food. And of course, I made here one mistake. I have to confess, uh, there is there is uh, there is no secret about that. That I had not too much idea about the returning diet. I know that it exists. You cannot just say, okay, now I will eat a hamburger or, or drink a coke because that would kill you for sure. Yeah. Because your digestive tract doesn't actually work. But but I didn't actually don't know how how, how fastly should, should I return to to normal diet and uh, I did probably a little bit faster than I should. Uh, so after after such kind of a longer fasting, uh, you have roughly two weeks uh, of a returning diet uh, and you usually start with some diluted uh, juices from uh, from uh, fruit, uh, which actually have to swallow very slowly and it takes actually three, four days just to go over those juices and then you can go into very soft uh, soups of rice, for example, or some vegetables, steamed vegetable, and you can actually add more and more slowly a little bit and you should eat no salt and no fat in during the first week and so on. So so there are some protocols which are again known, for example, from Russia uh, by, by Nikolaev and other guys who actually experience this is like the most safe protocol. Mm-hmm. So uh, so and actually because I was also not cleaning my intestine, uh, so it was actually a full of, of a stool. So at the end, uh, after a couple of days of, of this say returning uh, to normal food, I actually had an urge to 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 go in the toilet, and then then I I had a very I would say long long poo, which was actually very stiff. Uh, and I actually never see such a huge amount of, of stool coming from me, never. Wow, okay. So, so it actually accumulated over those 40, oh, sorry, 38 days of, of fasting, everything. And uh, uh, of course, uh, now, because I, I'm repeating fasting, but just with water. So what I'm doing, uh, the, those enema uh, every roughly two, three days, just to get rid of all those uh, actually wastes, which are remaining in, in, in the intestine. And I know it, this is helping uh, quite a lot. Uh-huh. So you you did mention uh, just recently about returning to a diet, and yeah, it is actually a a very dangerous thing if you if you fasted for that long and then suddenly eat. And the main reason for that is there's this condition called refeeding syndrome, where if you eat food after a prolonged fast, particularly carbohydrates, this leads to a surge of insulin, and that insulin can lead to electrolyte abnormalities, like your potassium can go very low. Um, your phosphorus can go low, and and you can die from that. And so it is a very careful process as far as slowly ramping up your diet. And that's something we do see in the hospital, too, when we're taking care of patients who need IV nutrition. Um, we usually start them at a lower, giving them a less amount of calories, not the the full amount if they've not eaten for a very long time. Right, and and uh, I'm I'm very glad that you can explain it in those words. Uh, uh, of course, much more scientifically than 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 I'm talking. But but it's right that this returning diet, I would say, has probably the same effect uh, and impact uh, as the fasting itself. So definitely, the spirit of time. Uh, cannot be just overlooked and say we don't care about that. Uh, there has to be a big caution. How is it? Sure, sure. Okay. So, did you get any like objective assessments after this was done? A colonoscopy, blood work, anything like that to confirm that everything had gone away or that you had healed from Crohn's disease? Yes, uh, of course. Uh, after I finished my fasting, I went to to see my my uh, gastroenterologist and telling him, okay, I finished fasting, and he said, okay, I would be also curious what was the impact of this fasting into your into your intestine. So uh, I had a colonoscopy. This was I think December, so roughly five months after I finished the fasting. And uh, so, so I just lay down, and he took the colonoscopy and went over the 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 through, uh, the through large intestine, and he said, "I actually cannot find anything there." Mm-hmm. And uh, he was very actually uh, astonished about that, and uh, he told me personally, "If if I didn't uh, didn't do colonoscopy of you before, I would never believe it that this is, it's going to actually have such a strong impact." 
So this was like a visual examination. Then, of course, uh, they took a blood. Uh, they, they measured uh, iron and all of those measurements what they do mm-hmm. typically. And they said this is it's basically normal. You have you know, you have some something a little bit offset, but this is still nothing really is, is strong. And of course, before I had the iron was even ten times lower than than the normal value. So so. Mm-hmm. Definitely, uh, definitely. Actually, the, the, the blood was more or less in, in okay state. Uh, so this was five months uh, after after the end of the fasting, and of course, uh, uh, I also go there from time to time, but not that often. Just just to control the, the blood, etc. So I would say now the time period is for five years. Uh, and basically, there are no symptoms uh, which would uh, or, or indications from the blood that would actually show that there is any problem. Of course, I feel it also because if you have anemia and all of those issues and loss of blood, uh, your physical work is actually it's, it's you know the power is very low. Uh, you can hardly catch your breath, and uh, mm-hmm. uh, riding bike is problem. So I know of those problems that I had before. Suddenly, they are all gone. So if if you actually had anemia related to your Crohn's disease where your hemoglobin was low um, in the past, you know, before you fasted, that would qualify as severe disease. Whenever we see people with any kind of lab abnormalities, uh, especially anemia, that means your disease was pretty severe before. And uh, so it looks like that normalized, which is very interesting. Uh, and uh, ultimately, the best, the best indicator of if something's working or not and you weren't on any medication or anything else you had just done this fast uh is is colonoscopy and do you by chance know if the biopsies did he do biopsies and were those normal as well uh, no no he didn't do biopsies because he said well everything cooks here so actually what samples should i take so he was not sure what to take okay yeah i mean according to our clinical trials and in inflammatory bowel disease the definition of mucosal healing or the endpoint that we strive for whenever we're testing a medication or any other treatment is is healing of the bowel and that's just endoscopically and so so that's great news that you had you'd healed from this and so what what happened after the fast like the the what diet do you follow now are you able to eat whatever you want or are you still very careful about you know avoiding processed foods and things like that uh, yes, o- of course, uh, when I finished fasting and I actually saw that th- there is like no bleeding and no problems related to Crohn's disease, I said, okay, I have to be careful about that. So so I have to go in, in food uh, a little bit more back into history. So as you mentioned, try to refrain from uh, processed foods and, and the different additives, which are not, of, I would say, of natural origin. Of course, you have thousands of additives, but, but uh, like Caragen is a little bit susceptible for, for maybe inflammation. And so I actually try to go into the diet that people used roughly 100 years ago, so which means not too much processed food, uh, I would say primitive kind of a food, steamed vegetable, on-grown food, uh, organic food, basically like that. Actually, actually, also decrease the consumption of meat, uh, like, like once a week or something like that. But but not too much meat in in the diet. I think this is not really uh, the, the critical issue, actually. But of course, not for me. I, I cannot generalize it to everybody uh, because, uh, of course, you may have some allergy to food. Uh, and uh, of course, if you start uh, again taking this food, I'm sure that you can also lead, lead back to this Crohn disease uh, after this after this uh, fasting. So, but this was not apparently my case. So, so I just started very carefully with food, and uh, after I would say one and one and or one and a half year. I was actually able to eat basically everything, but till today I'm actually refraining from those, I would say, too much artificial food uh, which we are getting. Uh, but otherwise, I don't have anything like really specific, like that I should not eat, uh, I don't know, salami or milk or, or that. But but I have to be like a modest in consumption, I would say, and, and take a little bit from everything. And what about for grains? There's a lot of people who follow certain diets for inflammatory bowel disease. One of them is the specific carbohydrate diet that's pretty popular. And in that diet, all grains are excluded. Are you able to eat grains, bread? Yes, yes, yes. I have absolutely no problem with that whatsoever. Okay. Okay. So I read in your document that you posted that you had advised a few people to do the same. 
with Crohn's. I don't know, maybe they were friends of yours. And some, some had success, and I think you had mentioned one did not. Can you talk a little bit about that, about observing other people that have tried this? Yes, I actually did it a little bit as, as an experiment because I'm an engineer. So I said, okay, now uh, I tried something on myself, but maybe we should try it on other people. And, uh, you know, if you wish something, it, it usually uh, some, somehow gets into your life. So uh, I just came in contact with roughly... Uh, three other people except me. So, so uh, I said, okay, uh, let this be kind of a representative uh, sample uh, of uh, people who are suffering from Crohn disease. Uh, I would say their extent of Crohn disease was roughly the same as me. So it was not very severe, mm-hmm. but it was not in the beginning. So they had it for a couple of years. It was diagnosed, so they they knew actually it exists. They were on on medication, daily medication. So 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 similar to me actually. And uh, I said, okay, let's do this experiment with fasting. And uh, uh, so, of course, they, they followed not just Burst protocol, but they followed also just fasting on water and different protocols because I said, this is actually your own decision. Uh, I cannot, this is kind of my protocol I followed, but maybe you feel it differently. So do it as you feel you should do it. And I have to, I have to emphasize that they, they uh, decided freely. So, so they were no, under no pressure to go into fasting. I think if you force someone go into fasting, the effects will not be very, very good. That, that's my opinion. Mm-hmm. So it has to be decision of, of that, of that, uh, of that uh, person that he wants to go into fasting. So actually the motivation was there from those three people. And uh, basically me uh, and two other guys actually healed so far seem to be completely healed. Uh, and one guy from those fours, uh, he seems that the symptoms returned after roughly half a year uh, after he finished the, the fasting. And he said, you know, for me, this is too complicated. Uh, going into fasting, I was suffering too much. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to go uh, anymore into this, into this direction. So, uh, so this was roughly, I would say, very preliminary result of, of this of this study, but actually it shows that uh, that it, it it may have some impact on, on people. So you said one of the one of the per- people you advised you had a very good response. Another one had a response, but then symptoms came back. Um, right. I wonder the diet did that person return to the diet like a diet like you mentioned a pre-1950s diet or a more whole foods type diet or was he you may not know this but what what kind of diet was he following after he finished the fast uh i i cannot tell you because this is what i didn't put uh, into the survey actually what was the diet after uh, he just said that he returned into the old way of living so which means that he probably did not change anything in the diet but what the diet was i have no idea okay and uh, and then there was a third person as well. Yeah, and the third person actually told me uh, I did this uh, 16 years ago with the same results as you. Uh, okay. So uh, so it was actually very big hope for me because uh, 16 years is 16 years, and I asked him actually how he felt, and he said, well, I feel the same way as you. I, I feel actually free of any symptoms of disease. And of course, people are always a little bit critical. So they said, "Okay, how can you be sure that you heal the disease? Uh, maybe it's just a kind of remission, or you know, it will it will appear later." Mm-hmm. And uh, I would say that there is much more to fasting. Actually, it's uh, because we are now describing this kind of say mechanism. Uh, actually, how how you say the body? Okay, you have to help yourself with your nutrient. But I believe there is very strong actually spiritual side of of, of the fasting and. Uh, even if you go through Bible and different different uh, books, usually those uh, those prophets and, and people who actually are very, I would say, highly uh, motivated in, in spirit, they usually go in, in fasting, not with, with the, not the motivation to heal the body, but with the motivation coming closer to I would say God or, or to some kind of a unity of universe. Sure. And uh, and and truly, this is this is I would say. Uh, the, the effect of fasting in, in the spiritual way. Uh, so, 
Uh, as, as I said, if you summary force into fasting, uh, you basically, usually that person is missing this spiritual uh, part of, of fasting, and he said, okay, my body will suffer, and because I don't want to suffer, I don't want to fast. That, that's, that's the conclusion of those people. Mm-hmm. But, if you say, but if you say that the motivation is, is spiritual, so we just say, buddy, okay, now you will work in a little bit different regime, but you will open your, your actually... Uh, your, your brain and, 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 and your mind into something more spiritual, then the motivation is completely different. And uh, of course, it happened also to me and also to that guy who did it 16 years ago. He said, suddenly, we, for example, feel the energies which are flowing around us. I, I never felt it before. Mm-hmm. But after fasting, I can actually feel it. So I can tell you, okay, there is some flow of energy back and forth. And if you go into, into again, uh, Russian literature, they said that, that there was a lot of kind of like miraculous uh, things happening to peace people who were fasting actually for a longer time. So I really believe that uh, actually opening to this spiritual side is maybe more important than that physical side that we do with the fasting. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, fasting is a very prominent aspect of many of the world's religions. Uh, definitely in Christianity, Hinduism, Jainism, Islam. I mean, it seems to be something that's consistent amongst many of the religions of the world. Um, so I agree that, that that is very much tied to kind of spiritual enlightenment. So that is obviously something we can't measure scientifically, and it's very difficult to study that aspect of it. But um, I understand that that could be an aspect of, of how this is working as well. Um, so I just wanted to speak briefly about kind of f- how fasting is thought of in, in currently in like Western medicine in, amongst gastroenterologists and IBD specialists. So in, in Crohn's disease, we know that fasting would make things better because the fecal stream, there's something about the fecal stream that that does, it's like it's necessary to have stool go through the GI tract to contribute to the inflammation. And, and when you stop that, people tend to get better. But this concept of fasting longer term is very foreign. Now, we do, we do give people bowel rest in the hospital who, for example, if there's a Crohn's disease patient who's, who has really bad disease, and um, we do sometimes put them on IV nutrition and give them no food by mouth. Uh, called TPN or total parenteral nutrition, but that is something very different from what you're describing because you're there, you're still getting the nutrients. They're still going through the IV. It's just you're not getting solid food going through the GI right. tract. Those people do get better, but once they go back to eating, it comes right back, almost immediately. Um, same thing with elemental formula and like polymeric formulas. I know you had mentioned the, that in your document as well. Yes, those are effective for Crohn's disease. Uh, be- they work better in, in children, but in adults, it's still effective compared to placebo, maybe not as effective as steroids. But once people get better on that and they go back to eating, it comes back. So the approach you're describing, to my knowledge, has not really been systematically studied. So it's just interesting to hear your story and hear some of the other people you know who've had success with this. Have you have you at all – oh, another thing I wanted to mention was fasting, there is some research to suggest that it could enhance this process called autophagy, which is the cellular process that gets rid of kind of damaged or damaged proteins in the cells and also helps to get rid of bacteria that enter into cells that otherwise people with Crohn's disease may have a, a defect in clearing that bacteria. Um, so – there are there, when they've done genome-wide associations and looked at the genome of patients with Crohn's, there are defects in this autophagy or clearing process in Crohn's disease patients, and we know that fasting can enhance autophagy. So yeah, I know in your document you talked about how some of the rationale behind you trying fasting was trying to reset the immune system, and potentially that could happen. I mean, that is not yet to be proven, but definitely with respect to this autophagy component to it, that can be enhanced by this. So if I had to come up with a mechanism of perhaps how this helped you or other people, is that. Now, the, the question is, do you really need to fast for that long for, you know, I know you did almost almost 42 days of fasting, or could there be something 
less less extreme like now you talk you hear people talking about intermittent fasting or time restricted feeding would that have a similar effect that's yet to be yet to be seen and yet to be studied and we just don't know the answer but um did have you ever tried to approach the medical field as far as saying hey i tried something it worked really well for me are you guys interested in studying this is this something you want to investigate further uh, yes, uh, of course, I made some attempts, but may maybe I should also explain one more thing, uh, which actually uh, came as conclusion after nine years. Uh, I actually fasted first in 2009, so it is nine years after. And I was looking in the book, actually, what is the cause of this of this disease? Because we are talking about mechanisms, how to stop the mechanism, how to stop the inflammation, how to reset the immune system. But this is still the material side. And I was talking to, to, to question why actually this disease happened to me? Uh, because usually it doesn't happen just by coincidence. There must be something in, in, in the back. And actually I came to a book which tries to explain those say, causes of diseases and how to cure them. And there is kind of a statistics, again, take it like numbers plus minus because it's again an unlimited amount of people. But they said that the, those qualities, constipation, inflammation in the lower digestive tract, usually 5% comes from hereditary causes. Uh, so, so you got it somehow uh, in, in your, in your uh, parents or, or grandparents. Uh, some job pathogenic zones, it's 7%. 8% is very low physical movement in, in, in everyday's life. 30% is food and drink. So in, in principle, some kind of allergies on, on uh, it doesn't have to be a really strong allergy. It could be just uh, that you don't, uh, your body doesn't respond correctly to some kind of nutrition. And 50% is spiritual cause. So, so actually this is interesting because it says that half of the problems that we are facing with the problem is spiritual, so it means that we did something wrong. And of course, in this book, there is also some explanation what we are doing wrong. And they are saying, actually, those diseases, this is called, this is uh, autoimmune disease, so this is self-destructive disease. And why actually we triggered in our life this self-destructive disease? And uh, there are, again, some reasons why actually we started this, this self-destruction of, 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 of our bodies. And uh, as, as the cause, they are mentioned greed, rigidity in life, loss of individuality and false modesty, and, and uh, too much emphasis on material side of things. So, uh, so this is like a, a, some kind of non-material cause of the disease. Mm -hmm. And, and the problem is actually that if you look on the body as, as, as a dual, dual system, like mind-body mind dual system or spirit-body dual system, so essentially, you always in your life decide between like spiritual program and body program. And, and we know it because if, if you get hurt, you usually come in mind, okay, I should give this, uh, this pain back to that, to that guy or I should forgive him because he's also part of the universe, uh, the same spirit as, as I am, but he's just in a different body. And essentially, this, this unity of, of a spirit and body seems to be also uh, in the background of the religion. And also, the fasting opens the way, actually, how to unify this spirit and body. And also, that's what I felt very strongly, that I actually made uh, not too much uh, separation between both parts of, of your body. It was body, but it was also spirit. And you felt kind of a unification. And as I said, you, f you felt like a harmony in everyday life. You, you were not bothered by anything because you say everything is working as it should be. So, so there was like no, this is this is good, this is bad. I should do this, I should do that. You were, I would say, in in, in perfect, uh, perfect relaxed mode, and uh, this is definitely something that you can hardly measure in in, in our science and, and and doctors. But but I'm still convinced that this is one of the probably the, the main part of the fasting is actually to show you the problems in your spiritual life. And, and I, can, I can say my problem exactly was loss of individuality. I said, okay, somebody wants to me do something, so probably the best way is to say, okay, I will do it. And even if I, if I don't like it, and I would should rather say, okay, sorry, but I cannot do it for some reason because I have different uh, 
perception or, or I can object at something, I said, no, 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 I have to do it because, you know, he's more important than me. And this is actually how you, how I actually created in my life this disbalance between the spiritual and body program because the body killed my spirit. Said so my spirit is not very more than than the spirit from other guy. And actually, I think this was why actually this disease was triggered in my case. And by fasting, I should actually rediscover that this was the, the problem in my life, and I should go over it. And that's why I I dare to say that actually this disease will never come back because the message the disease had in this sense actually it's done. The, the message is gone. There's no reason to 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 uh, come back again and to 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 tell me okay you made this mistake and and please don't do it again. So uh, maybe I went into a different direction than, than you ask, uh, but to me this is actually how, how to capture this kind of mechanism in, uh, in, in the classical you know, double-blind studies or, 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 or all of those different methods that we are using, how to capture this spiritual way, how to capture that people change their mind in something, and actually that, that, that was the mechanism how they healed and cured. I very appreciate that perspective. So... Yeah, it's it seems like you correct me if I'm wrong, but you're you're the spiritual issue that you feel like contributed to the manifestation of this disease was that you were was it that you were doing things that people were telling you to do maybe at work that you were just doing because they were telling you to do because they were perhaps in a in a position of more authority when in your heart in your soul you felt like whatever that task was to do was not the right step or wasn't the right thing and you were doing things like that but subsequently you you are now doing things that you more believe in is that is that what you felt like was the the realization you had I, I, exactly. I, yeah. uh, this was like putting more priority into the others than to yourself. Sure. And uh, this actually leads to, to, you know, this is the finding, but uh, Christianity is a little bit not sure about that. Actually, who is more important, whether you are the others. And uh, actually, this was the warning. This disease was warning. Don't forget of yourself. You are here. This is your life. You need to decide what you have to do. But of course, this is not egoism. Egoism saying there is just me and no one else. This is just saying here's you and the others but you have to take care of yourself mm -hmm. you got your, your body we have all the same spirit so we are somehow united on this level and actually that body tries to separate each of us uh, other and also uh, if you say that the others are more important than you you are actually killing your spirit in yourself and this is my, my perception of this of this uh, autodestructive methods, this is not just Crohn's disease. There is, of course, many more diseases actually coming into these immune systems. And uh, I really believe that this could be only really half of the issues uh, which are related to such kind of diseases. Yeah, it's very interesting to hear you speak about this. And I know Ayurveda has similar concepts as far as kind of personality types and manifestation of disease. Uh, and I have read books. Uh, there is a psych psychiatrist named Gabor Mate who had read, wrote a book um, I'm forgetting the title of it but he talked about people who do develop cancer or autoimmune disease tend to have a certain personality type and those people tem tend to be somewhat selfless and they um, sacrifice themselves a lot for the sake of others and as a result it's this disease manifesting as almost a way to make you realize that, no, you need to focus on the body. You need to focus on yourself as well and make sure you're doing well and not com continuously sacrifice your happiness and your health for other people to the detriment of your own body. So, um, yeah, I really, you know, I like that you're mentioning this stuff. Obviously, the, the, the research tools we have, we're not able to investigate these mechanisms or to see if this is really really what's involved and sometimes we get really bogged down in western medicine and mechanisms and creating medications that block certain proteins and but ultimately i think what you're doing is zooming out is like zooming out from that perspective instead of looking in the trees looking at the forest and seeing why did this happen is there something more to this than just some protein turning on some signal in the immune system that, and then it's going haywire. It's like, hey, why did this get triggered in the first place? Is it more than just some environmental trigger? Is it more than just some component in the food that's breaking down the gut barrier that's leading to 
the disease. I mean, maybe that's a contributor, but maybe there's something more because not everybody gets this disease and we're all pretty much exposed when you live in a Western country uh, or even globally now, IBD is a global disease. We're pretty much exposed to a lot of the same things in the food supply, the same environmental exposures. And we know this disease is probably predominantly a, uh, an environmental influence. So why do some people get the disease and other people don't? And then you start to think about these ten, is personality pay, playing uh, a part in this or, or kind of like how you live your life or, or um, you know, the, 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 brunt, the gut brain connection and, and, and your spiritual life and these things. So it's, it's interesting to talk about. It's an, a very interesting exercise. Obviously, we don't really have the tools to prove it at this point, but I do appreciate the perspective and I wonder about these things too. Yeah, and uh, you know the message for me uh, is because it's very individual actually uh, the, the problem that people are facing. But if they decide to do something, there is still a lot of possibilities to, to, to do. And of course, fasting is one of those methods. But but you know somebody will find uh, their way in some congregation or into some you know clergy or, or wherever. So uh, this is the very way. And uh, I actually consider this disease as kind of just. Uh, of a kind of a warning uh, to, to people. You are doing something wrong. Try to change something in your life, and the disease can go off. Uh, of course, uh, to, to decipher that, uh, even if I do it on myself, it took me actually years to find that this was probably the cause. And I could not imagine that by just some interviewing, you know, and and and, uh, and, and, and going through that, you will actually find out what is the cause. Uh, otherwise, you have some, I would say, very very supernatural abilities to do it. Uh, so probably it's it's a better uh, better of ourselves as as, as patients uh, to do something with our eyes because nobody else can actually do it. Uh, mm-hmm. Do you do you know and of those people you've advised for for this fasting protocol, or that you know, did they all have Crohn's disease or did some have ulcerative colitis? Uh, they, they had Crohn disease, and uh, there was also one interesting notion. Uh, they said after fasting, we change our life. That's what they said. And even people to me said, after fasting, you are a different person. Mm-hmm. And I said, how? I, I don't feel any difference in my life. But you say, no, 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 you are a different person. Before, uh, you were like more selfish, and you were like more closed. And now you are like more open to the others. And you actually act uh, in, in like a more positive way. So that's what I said. Actually, I don't feel it personally. I know that there were some changes, but I cannot tell you exactly what happened in, inside me. But something happened definitely. Okay. So can you, for anybody who's interested in checking out kind of your primary sources that you used, um, can you give the spelling of? You said there was. This this document, this five page document about fasting related to more cancer treatment. Um, can you give the spelling of the author of that and where somebody in the U.S. could find that? Yeah, that was uh, Rudolf Breus, uh, uh, B R U. Uh, sorry, I have to type it. <laughs> That's okay. Breus, yeah, B R E U S S. Uh, so uh, that's a boys boys uh, cancer diet. It's usually called, and uh, I, I basically found it in every bookstore. So, uh, uh, but you know, I, I'm not saying you have to follow that protocol. It's it's just kind uh, of I would say very proved thing uh, which was there. But what I like on this book was the motivation uh, that he actually giving to the disease, like no fear of disease. You know, even if it's cancer, cancer, no fear, uh, it it can go off. And you, I didn't feel it too much in other books. Usually people were scared of diseases and they say, you may try this method, this method, and we don't know whether it will work. But he was absolutely convinced that this is the way to go. So that's what I look on the, on, on, liked on this book. Okay. And then as far as finding your, your document that you had put online, how, how do people find information about that? Uh, I don't know. It's somewhere, somewhere on the internet. There, there is, there is a link. So maybe if you just put fasting and and my name, so maybe the document will pop out. Uh, right. Yeah. I, I'm I not saying that. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm thinking there is nothing really special in the document, and I, I will really say this is really individual to to everyone. Uh, usually. Every nation got some school of, I would say, fasting. In in the United States, there was uh, Paul Breck and and Armstrong. Uh, mm-hmm. 
they were actually very big fans of fasting. Uh, they usually did just water fasting. Mm -hmm. I did roughly 10 times water fasting as well. It's a little bit more difficult than the broils. But over years, basically, I, I'm, I'm doing fasting every year now. But the reason is, 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 is spiritual. I, I really like it because, you know, the body will relax very well. And I actually can very well feel uh, like the presence of, of God or some energy which is all around. So that's now a motivation of fasting. That's not a disease. But, but I'm doing every day, sorry, every, every year for roughly three weeks uh, just on water. So there, there's no problem in it as well. Uh, but of course, it needs some time to, to get to, to this. Uh, so, so starting with just water, I would say this would be a little bit more brutal than, for example, following the bros, bros diet. Mm -hmm. but, but anyway, somebody can feel that water is okay for him. No problem to go that way. Okay. Yeah, and again, from my perspective, this is not an endorsement of this treatment for anybody uh, to use, you know, I'm just somebody who likes to reach out to people who are trying new things, and it's not necessarily endorsing really anything. Um, obviously, people have to do their own research, speak to their own physicians, but I can tell you for sure there's no physician in the United States that's going to recommend your protocol or endorse it, um, just because we are very grounded in you know, evidence. Will this ever be studied in the future? It's hard to say. That's an unfortunate reality of our medical system is that medications get a lot of the funding and a lot of the research support. Um, I think eventually something like this will be studied, uh, but uh, we don't have that data right now. So, you know, I'm not, I cannot recommend this to any of my patients and most, but ultimately people are free to do whatever they want with their own body and make their own decisions. Um, so, Again, thank you so much. Thank you so much for being on. And um, did you have anything you'd like to add? But otherwise, this was a, a very interesting um, conversation with you. This is unlike any other podcast I've done, um, especially because I'm, you know, reaching, you know, somewhere outside the U.S. now and, like, kind of going globally and seeing what other people are doing. But it's a very interesting conversation and uh, promising, promising avenue for research in the future. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, Samuel, for this wonderful talk to you. And uh, uh, ju just maybe uh, the last verse that I that I that I found uh, in the scriptures. There is written: If you do not fast as regards the word, you will not find the kingdom. If you do not observe the Sabbath as Sabbath, you will not see the Father. So maybe this is just the message: Keep finding your way in your life, and then you will be happy. Great, great words to end on. Thank you. Thanks again. So, um, yeah, I'll stop the